Good afternoon. What's going on there, folks? It is I, the Earth Master, here on this Monday, start of the work week, August 2nd, 2021, about 2 p.m. West Coast time here in California, where we're looking at a pretty significant earthquake swarm occurring just to the west of me here into Northern California into parts of the uh, coastal range. We'll go ahead and bring, uh, bring you over to this other map so we can take a look a little bit closer at what's going on and the... Uh, uh, potential for uh, possibly further movement, maybe a larger earthquake in this region. Uh, the area I'm kind of watching here is in Northern California. Let's go ahead and go all magnitudes here. It uh, doesn't really make too much of a difference here around this region that I'm watching. Uh, of course, we've got normal typical swarming down here around the uh, geothermal activity uh, plant in the uh, geyser area. That's pretty typical. But the swarm I'm watching is up here. It sits over uh, west of the valley, west of Orland Willows area. West of uh, Chico, looks like due west of Chico area, uh, up in the mountains. And there's a pretty good sizable swarm kicking off here. Uh, so far, the largest in the swarm is a 3.7. Uh, the earthquake's been ranging roughly between the upper twos to lower threes. And looking at 12 earthquakes so far in this cluster of swarms with a little migration here with the 3.1 well away from the uh, the main swarming area about a mile and a half or so down in that creek area looks like uh, looks like a pretty shallow surface event uh, it is still at an automatic status review status so that means it has not been reviewed by a seismologist but uh, very possible uh, that they will uh, adjust that location and the depth uh, upon review of that earthquake but uh, it's kind of up here though in the wilderness area Let's see what we got here Covalo uh, sits well over here to the northwest we got Black Butte Lake Stony uh, Stony Gorge that lake where I was at um, doing that video of how low it is I mean it's just pretty much a pond right now and then a, uh, East Park Reservoir near Stony Gorge in uh, Ladoga region this activity taking place, like I said, up in the mountains area, mountainous area, and it's taken, uh, it, you can't really see it on this map. There's a Bartlett Springs fault system that runs through here. It's kind of marked on the USGS mark uh, map, Bartlett Springs down here as well. We've got Covalo. If you go over here and check out the uh, different map here, the fault systems, this shows you a little bit more precise uh, faults and their constrained specifics here on this map um, this little section right here kind of branches off of the main section there's a series of Bartlett Springs faults uh, in this area you got the Makama fault system over here Bartlett Springs the earthquake activity kind of taking place right around the southern end of this uh, fault system called the uh, uh, the Bartlett Springs fault system round valley section uh, looks like slip rate accumulation between 1 and 5 mm per year. So it, there is a little bit of buildup um, over time. Of course, it is on the eastern side of the Pacific uh, North American plate boundary called the San Andreas Fault. that runs off coast here. It runs off the coast. Uh, so no doubt a lot of buildup and stress. Uh, not, a, not a tremendous a lot, but definitely some buildup and stress here in this region uh, with a potential accumulation of 5 uh, MM a year, we could be uh, looking at potentially, you know, a little bit more sizable earthquake. I went back and looked at some of the uh, uh, historical data for this region, and there's not a whole lot. This goes back uh, 100 years or so, 4.5 and above. Uh, looks like, so you got Orland here, Willows. Uh, the Bartlett Springs Fault System would be right around over here. Looks like there may have been. Uh, a little earthquake 4.5 back in 1928 uh, within this region but not a whole lot of seismic activity uh, over the last 120 years or so and possibly it could be uh, um, uh, some further larger earthquakes back in time before records were kept but uh, looking at the USGS catalog doesn't show too much in this region uh, towards the Great, Va Great Valley Fault over here uh, in the valley a couple more fours a little bit more recent uh, t uh, back in 2008 had a pair of uh, mid fours in that region so just kind of keeping an eye on it folks um, general idea when we see swarms like that is you know what's going on is there a potential for a big one 
looking at this uh, map here, seeing these magnitudes. Um, you know, obviously there could be a potential for a little bit larger magnitude here. Um, and like I say, that Bartlett Fault spring sec uh, section runs right through here, about the southern end, right about right about in that area. Even though this map does not show it, so it's a well-constrained line type, so very visible, I guess, in this area. Uh, right lateral type of uh, fault system right here. Looks like it was last reviewed back in 2017. So just kind of keep an eye on this area, folks. The western coast, still seeing some movement. Right, uh, we did see that earthquake off the coast of Oregon and they had another one, 3.4 in the Blanco Fracture Zone. And some further activity down here at the southern end of the Gorda uh, Plate. And uh, towards the Cascadia Megathrust area, you can see some movement there within that region. Pretty deep activity uh, once again taking place in this area. We've been watching quite a bit of movement here, just specifically in the southern edge. This is just over the last week or so. Most of this uh, activity, deep movement down into the Cascadia uh, with a high rate of slip, down dip, downstream over the last couple weeks. Uh, obviously, uh, applying back building pressure here along the Cascadia Megathrust uh, region where it uh, subducts there with the, uh, the uh, North American plate. Let's see what else we got along the Makama Fault. Remember a few months ago we had a little swarm out here near Willits. Nothing really became of it, but uh, it lasted for quite a few days. I think they had a, a few twos and threes in this area. I believe it was just off this fault system called the Makama Fault and uh, kind of situated out here. Uh, so far it looks pretty quiet, even over the last week doesn't look like there's too much, a little 1.9. Uh, but that swarming came and went without any major earthquake uh, in that area. But you just never know uh, with, with these swarms which ones may trigger something, which ones may not. You know, it's obviously a buildup of stress um, in the region from the west and the uh, North American plate here. Uh, let's see, further down, of course, the geyser activity. It's a movement uh, east of St. Helena. That's a 1.4, and also it looks like some movement north of Vacaville. That's kind of odd here within the delta, or uh, eh, kind of out of the delta, uh, partially into the Sacramento Valley. A little deeper movement, uh, 1.8 for that uh, for that earthquake. Bay Area looking pretty quiet for right now. Major plate boundary runs through the San Francisco area, highly populated region. Of course, I'm not really too concerned about this. It's been a it's been a while since they've had a you know major earthquake on the San Andreas Fault here in this region, this section. But uh, much much longer uh, as we head towards the south here with the uh, the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. That's much more uh, uh, built up in in the uh, terms of plate stress. Ridgecrest area seen a little bit of movement today. Of course, this is uh, aftershock activity from July 4th, July 5th, a couple years ago. That could continue for no doubt years to come. Uh, a little bit of movement up through Long Valley Super Volcano. Kind of looked at this last night in the uh, Nevada Desert and the Antelope Valley region. Uh, let's see what else we got. A little bit of movement down here along the Imperial Fault too. A 3.1 south of the border. No swarming to the north. It's uh, something to watch and keep an eye on when we see swarms uh, in any area. It's kind of kind of good to be. Um, on guard and on alert, especially when it comes to the uh, San Andreas Fault down there, the sleeping giant uh, that could uh, wreak havoc, havoc on the Southern California area when that thing does decide to uh, let go. Huntington Beach region, a couple of small microquakes off here. Uh, looks like near the San Pedro Channel, off the coast of Long Beach. Nothing uh, significant, just a couple, couple microquakes. Uh, looking at the rest of the country. Some quakes up around the Pacific Northwest once again. I'm kind of curious to see what the trimmer map is going to look like. Uh, I believe this was from last night. Uh, there's some further activity in Idaho. Movement picking up. Looks like this is definitely picking up down in the uh, Pecos, Texas region. 
kind of migrating out as well. We've been watching a swarm of activity over the past, oh, couple months or so, mostly confined to where this region is here. But uh, over the past, uh, at least a day, you can see migration away from it to the west and also to the east, southeast of Pecos. Not specifically sure what's out here, but getting some uh, a little bit larger magnitudes, 3.1 the largest. Of course, we can check out the uh, satellite view and uh, no surprise there, see quite a bit of, those are not beautiful farmhouses out in Texas, folks. Those are not little camping sites situated throughout the desert in Texas. Those are all indeed fracking and pumping operations at a very, very high number. Uh, so no doubt um, creating a lot of weak crustal areas out there. Um, kind of interesting here looking at this, uh, these little wave patterns in the, uh, of, of the land. But uh, anyway, looking at this map here, uh, there's there's a ginormous amount of fracking operations out there. It's hard to miss. It's it's not hard to miss, right? Uh, and far as the area around northwest of the Pecos, Texas area, yes, quite a bit up here to the north. When it comes to pumping operations, a lot of older ones it looks like uh, in the region. But uh, definitely seen a heightened amount of earthquake activity uh, within recent months of uh, that location there in Texas. Uh, Oklahoma, of course, getting in on quite a bit of earthquake activity as well. Pumping operations scattered about the land. Uh, new Madrid fault system, pretty quiet for now. Uh, let's see what else we got. Let's zoom in or zoom out. Puerto Rico area kind of amping up, getting a little migration towards the Puerto Rico trench region with some deeper movement in that area. Looks like uh, a, a pretty deep one. Northeast of Puerto Rico, but south of the trench, at 111 kilometers, that's some pretty deep movement there. Also another deep earthquake, 3.3, a little bit further, closer to the Puerto Rico trench region. This area capable of, uh, well, shaking things up quite a bit there in the Puerto Rico area. South America, I believe this is some older activity from last night. Um, nothing really new to report down there in South America. We did see a little bit of movement near Tokyo uh, and the uh, Japan trench region, some further deep earthquake movement. Uh, stretching out along this area still waiting for the potential for a much larger release here pretty soon it can only handle so much stress uh, Indonesia area did see a borderline 6.0 5.9 earthquake striking at uh, looks like about 12 kilometers or so below the surface and the, uh, the 5.6 that was from last night a little bit of movement further to the north 4.3 pretty deep earthquake 500 kilometers so most for that earthquake uh, south of the Fiji area. So just kind of watching things, folks, kick up on the west coast. Um, def definitely highlighting onto, into the interior uh, mountain west regions and uh, watching this coastal range activity ramp up. Gonna keep a close eye on that uh, pretty closely. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, really haven't checked that out yet today. I don't think there's any swarming. Uh, oh, they did have an earthquake, that's right, well to the east here. I forgot to point this out here, 3.7 northeast of Casper. That happened, uh, I believe, last night, if I remember correctly. Kind of an oddball out there, right? Way away from Yellowstone, but kind of right up against the, uh, oh, possibly within the uh, uh, North American Craton region. 11 kilometers for that uh, 3.7, that earthquake did show up pretty significantly throughout the Yellowstone uh, seismographs uh, pretty much all over ex except for these ones that are squashed out like Upper Falls and Old Faithful I mean you can see how uh, squashed they are it doesn't they don't pick up anything I don't even think they'd pick up Bigfoot if Bigfoot was running through the uh, through the forest up there and, and stomping on the seismograph uh, far as any swarming goes, folks, it looks pretty quiet. Maybe a little bit of microquake activity here around this station. A couple small jabs of uh, earthquakes there, but nothing significant. All right, folks, have a good day. Going to jump off here and just uh, kind of hang out for a little bit and watch this earthquake activity. We will update you guys if anything uh, changes uh, with this swarm there in Northern California. Kind of watching it closely because it's in my neck of the woods. All right, guys, have a good day. We'll chat you a little bit later. Peace out.